Now to the criminal trial of beleaguered R&B superstar R. Kelly in Brooklyn Federal Court. For the very latest, we bring in ABC News consultant Brian Buckmeyer, who's with the Law and Crime Network. Good to see you again, Brian. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Lindsay. Thank you. Uh, we heard from a second accuser today. What did she have to say? Yes, so Jane Doe number five painted the picture of years of sexual and also uh, physical and psychological abuse. Now, she met R. Kelly when she was 17 and was a living girlfriend with him for four years until October of 2019. That spanned the documentary of uh, surviving R. Kelly, which she said that she, along with the other girlfriends in the house, were not allowed to watch. In fact, R. Kelly said that it was a lie and told them to quickly change the channel. We heard a number of types of rules the same rules we heard from earlier uh, Jane Doe's who testified saying that they had to wear baggy clothes. But we also heard about the type of punishment that R. Kelly would dish out if she, for example, broke a rule of talking to other girlfriends about the relationship. And for the first time, we heard about R. Kelly allegedly forcing a Jane Doe to have unconsensual or non-consensual sex, sorry, with another male for punishment or R. Kelly's pleasure. And we're expecting to hear from several accusers as the prosecution tries to convince the jury that R. Kelly had a pattern and a long history of abuse behavior. Uh, tell us some of the most shocking allegations that you've heard so far, and, and are there some themes starting to emerge? Some of the more shocking allegations are how the prosecution is actually anticipating what the defense is going to argue. Don't forget that this Jane Doe, while she's using a pseudonym in the trial, we're very familiar for, with her because she had an interview with CBS's Gail King, where she was saying even just months before she left in 2019 that this was a family, that this wasn't abusive. On the stand, we heard that R. Kelly had this kind of system where he would cough to let them know that he was present, and he talked about a system of isolation and conditioning, where she had to lie both to the national news when she had interviews, but also to her family members on the few occasions she had to actually speak to her family. R. Kelly, according to her, would lie and say, your family sold you for narcotics. They don't care about you. Your life is better here. Uh, that was some of the more shocking testimony that I thought came across because it, I thought it gave really defense not much to work with. R. Kelly was briefly married to the late superstar Aaliyah. Tomorrow is the 20th anniversary of the plane crash that took her life. Why was she discussed at this trial? So part of the case here, because we are talking about the RICO Act, uh, racketeering, as well as the Mann Act, part of that is a bribery charge. And Demetrius Smith took the stand and said that he actually was a part of bribing an Illinois official $500 to get a welfare ID to allow R. Kelly to marry Aaliyah to hide and conceal uh, this illegal act of having sex with a minor. That is part of the RICO charges that the prosecution is throwing at R. Kelly. But I think to some degree it backfired a little because Demetrius Smith was kind of unclear as to whether or not R. Kelly participated in getting this ID so that he can marry Aaliyah. And so I think the prosecution has to shore up that a little bit in order to prove their case as to that charge. And give us a recap of how the defense is countering all the prosecution's case so far. So, so far the defense is kind of attacking it from two angles. One being this type of buyer's remorse argument that these women wanted to be around R. Kelly. He was uh, this beacon towards them that they flocked towards and they lied about their age initially and continue to have what many would consider to be a bizarre or unique relationship is kind of how they're painting it, but still a loving and familiar relationship as many of these women on former occasions called it a family. And so they're trying to make this argument of buyer's remorse and entrapment that these underage women entrapped R. Kelly, who is maybe not the sharpest tool in the shed, considering he's uh, illiterate and can't read, and they're trying to paint this picture of him being a victim. They're also, especially with Jane Doe number five, saying, you were with this all along, uh, attacking their credibility to say that this was a relationship that you participated in willingly, that you could have escaped at any point in time, but you chose to go on these flights. You chose to go with R. Kelly to these different locations, and this is merely you being angry after the fact and throwing allegations after him uh, to try to, I don't know, discredit his credibility or whatever it may be or get money. So their defense is, uh, is a little iffy. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but it only takes one juror to have a hung jury. Brian Buckmeyer, our eyes and ears in the courtroom, we thank so much. My pleasure.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.